So I'll give you a notice uh, two minutes to the end. Or, or like, like, uh, I'm pretty, pretty short, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi everybody. Um, I'm Andrea Grigoriu, and I'm a, a master's student in artificial intelligence. And this project is actually part of uh, my internship project that I did at the Institute of Data Science uh, in Maastricht, the Netherlands. So. Um, so for a use case, maybe researchers could be uh, interested in a question such as which genes does alcohol interact with? However, to just answer the simple question, we already need to look at two separate data sets, HGMC to get the gene information and uh, CTD to get this interaction information. However, this is not the only problem. These data sets can actually be in two separate formats, even CSV and TSV. And even if we actually look at their columns, we may have something like symbol or gene symbol columns that we are not actually sure if they represent the same gene attribute unless we actually manually look at it. So we were actually wondering if we can automatically determine what the columns are and how they are related. So for our research question, we were wondering, can we semi-automate the transformation of biomedical data sets into a semantically meaningful representation? And specifically for this part of the project, can we assign the concept for a column label in a tabular data file? So our wor work actually lies <laughs> between a lot of other fields, so to start with concept recognition, which basically represents mapping a piece of text to a previously selected dictionary, ontology mapping, which actually, um, in which most tools actually require manual input or domain knowledge on how to build an ontology, word embeddings, which are, um, they have been talked before, the, there are these low dimensional vectors that can actually preserve the semantic character of words, and also conversion tools that might help us get all this data into the same format at least. However, these conversion tools um, fall into three main categories. They either require domain knowledge, they might be inaccessible for users with no programming skills, and some of them are commercial, so they're black box. We don't really know how they do it. So as I've said, our project falls somewhere in the middle with our innovation being concept rec using concept recognition with machine learning classification for semi-automated um, uh, uh, semantic data. So for data sets, we um, use three separate data sets because of their focus on genes. We wanted to start with the gene concept. Uh, so we looked at HGNC, CTD, and PharmGKB. You can see that they vary in size and also in their column numbers. So some of them are o have over 40 columns and some of them have less. And if we look at the column names, some of them are actually real word, words that humans can understand. However, they might also use acronyms such as INA, which are actually harder to understand. So uh, for our methodology, we used these three separate data sets and we developed two separate tracks. The first one focuses on only using column names uh, with which we actually generate a synthetic data, sets. We, uh, data set. We expand the data set using both heuristics and an RNN, but I'm gonna talk about this later on. We did some data pre-processing, uh, pre splitting the data into training and testing, and then in the end did some binary classification using an artificial neural network. For the second approach, we actually looked at both column names and values and we followed kind of the same steps with pre-processing, splitting for training and testing, and classification, but this time using an embedding model. Uh, so starting with the first methodology, we started by extracting all the names, um, all the possible column names that were in these uh, data sets, but we actually only ended up with 93 names. So this is not nearly enough for a successful classification task. So what we did was first we tried some uh, easy heuristics like generating all names in lowercase characters, uppercase, replacing uh, spaces with underscores, underscores with dots, and splitting 
uh, strings and reconcatenating them randomly. But this only um, resulted in a th over a thousand names, so this was also not enough. So then we took all these names and we actually trained the recur uh, character level recurring neural network on the existing data, so we ended up with over 3,000 names. And for all these names, we actually manually labeled them for positives and negatives examples, so all the words that actually made sense to a human being, even if they have up both uppercase and lowercase characters, were um, labeled as positive examples, but then uh, the words that had just a random order of characters were labeled as negative examples. So this is an overview of the classification uh, process. We would start by taking a column name, pre-process it into a vector of size 38, because this was the biggest size that we could find in a column name. And then each of the characters from the name was transformed into its ASCII code so that we can actually get a numerical representation and use it in a classification task. Then we plug this in into um, an artificial neural network with only one hidden layer that we used for binary classification to see if the gene concept is present. However, due to the artificial nature of this method, we only used um, a, num a very small number of column names, real column names from the data, and the rest of it was built artificially. If we look at the confusion matrix that we, uh, was generated, actually, are, um, we have really high percentages where the classes are mislabeled, so over 40%. So this led to the second uh, method, actually, where we would use column names and the values in these columns. So again, we did data preprocessing, splitting and training, and then classification using an embedding model. So then this is a bit different. So we have these pairs of both column names and the value inside that column. And for pre-processing, we actually index the column name from 0 to 16, since we used in total only 17 columns. Um, and then for the values, we also index them from, for example, from 0 to 200. But whenever we would find a new value that was not encountered, we would um, increase this number. Then we used the neural network embedding, which actually had two separate layers um, uh, for embedding, both for the column names and uh, the values. And then the same binary classification to see if the gene concept is present. This already worked a lot better, so we did 100 test iterations to test our model. You can see that it doesn't vary as much, so this uh, tells us that the model is stable. Um, also, the accuracy is quite high, so the mean accuracy is actually 85%, and the model only reaches 50% and doesn't go below that at all, just once. Um, so then using this information, we actually built a complete framework where you could easily input your data, do, uh, do pre-processing on it, and then use our model for classification to see if the gene concept is present, where we include this concept recognition. Um, then, um, actually, this was, so it was not enough, so then we would like to actually have a list of ontologies that only focus on genes. And the only, well, the, the way that we did it was actually to use Aberowl, which is an extra ontology repository that actually has this option of selecting a limited list of ontologies that focus on a specific subject. So after we get the list from Aberowl of gene ontologies, we would do um, search in the bioportal for annotation, um, and we would use this whole list, so we would perform a restricted property search. And then we would find the full matches and use both the class identified, so gene, and the properties um, in the conversion. So you can see that already our framework um, has great results on the three data sets. So um, over 60%, well, over 40% in all of the data sets columns actually had matches found in properties uh, from Bioportal. And in comparison with um, using just bioportal search options such as class search, longest match, so looking for the exact match of the word, property search, property search, exact, exact match, our framework performs the best, best with almost 60% accuracy. 
So in conclusion, we performed a semi-automatic annotation on three data sets for the gene concept, and we used both uh, concept recognition with machine learning to help identify the gene concept with a mean of 85% accuracy. Also, our proposed framework, which combines both bioportal annotation um, with this concept recognition achieves higher precision versus only using the options that BioPortal annotation provides. And we also have open source code available on, on GitHub. However, our model has various limitations. So for the beginning, the model train is trained for only recognizing the gene concept. So if we want to apply it to anything else, we would have to retrain it. Also, the model, since uh, it's based on embeddings, it would require retraining for um, using this classification on different data sets. So if we encounter new columns with different values that we have never seen before in these three data sets, we would have to retrain the model to involve these as well. And also, since in the end, our complete overall framework actually relies on BioPortal, some of the properties are actually not well documented. They don't have all the instructions of where this property can be used and so on. So even if we found them, we just took a chance basically by using BioPortal. Um, but then for future work, we would like to actually include a column similarity measure and the framework so that we wouldn't have to do the search all the time for each column name. We would like to retrain the model with more data to increase its accuracy and also maybe try to restructure it to perform multi-classification, multi so including more concepts, maybe proteins and so on. Um, and also maybe try to go back to our artificial data sets and use other methods for building it, such as synonyms for uh, WordNet and so on. So th this is it. <laughs>